Business English Case Study Wedding Steps by Mike Smith Part 2 of the series English Language in Small Business In this presentation we're going to have a look at a typical micro business. A micro business is a very small business with perhaps just one or two people working as uh, owners and proprietors of a business. And this particular business has a problem. Um, the business has been running for around about four years now. I'm an English teacher but I'm also a dance teacher and so I'm going to use um, my business Wedding Steps which is a dance teaching business to uh, demonstrate our business English lesson. When we do this we're going to have a look at some aspects of business and one very important aspect of business are goals. Personal goals and business goals. We'll also of course be looking at business planning aspects and looking back um, a retrospective um, after four years of operation of this business we'll be looking at a SWOT analysis and we'll also look at product definition with respect to the market need to make sure that the product or the service actually matches what the clients want. We'll also look at marketing and advertising and aspects of business performance, success versus goals. And these goals tie back to the original personal goals and business goals that we set out with. And finally, we'll have a look at some ideas about where to from here for this business. Goals. Why start a business? Not everyone does start a business. And people would start businesses for different reasons, but most often it has to do with their personal goals. Often people want a little more control over where they work and who they work with and what they work on. And so they're looking for choices and they may have a dream of doing something which would not be possible unless they started their own business or perhaps bought another business. Business goals generally revolve around money, looking at profit, viability, the health of a business and also how it grows. And growth is often associated with the success of a business. In this particular case this is one aspect we're going to have a look at very closely. So at some point in your life you may ask yourself this question, will you keep your job or will you start or buy a business? Well, let's have a look at my goals. And these were my goals in 2003. I wanted to choose my work hours and my work location. I wanted to work part time and I wanted to make use of my evenings to work at home because um, I had plans to start a family and I wanted to be able to care for my children. I also wanted to choose my work standards and practices, how things were to be done because often I'd worked in places where I didn't necessarily agree that they were doing things in the way that they ought to be doing them. In order to achieve those personal goals I looked at starting a business and I wanted that business to give me about the same amount of money as what I was achieving as a normal teacher. So a normal teaching salary was about $35,000 a year. So that's my profit goal. I'm also interested in uh, doing things well. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to start my own business is because of this reason. So whatever I wanted to do had to be high quality. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of money to invest. So I needed a way to start a business that was low risk and low capital investment. What are your goals? Think about your personal goals, perhaps what dreams you may have, where you want to live, what lifestyle you want, do you want a family or is your existing family an important consideration? And what about your work and career prospects? What type of work, what type of career are you looking for? Where do you want to work? And is job satisfaction important to you? Is salary important to you? And which of these are most important? 
when you select your work or career. When you consider these personal and work and career goals, does this suggest at some point in your future that you may be running your own business? Discuss this with your partner for a few minutes. So we set out to start our business and of course initially you need to do some planning. So I thought about all of these things. I wanted to teach wedding dance because it is um, an aspect or a type of dance teaching that I have always really enjoyed. Um, and I have a good knowledge of uh, dance teaching even back then. However, I'd never run a business before, so I really had no idea about business management. I also didn't really have any experience in marketing or advertising, and I certainly had no cash for investment. So obviously, I needed some training and education. But where do you get this when you want to start your own business? What I did was I read books, because books are cheap and they're available. I also used the internet. Two books that I looked at were The E-Myth, by Michael Gerber and the e-myth um, in business um, jargon refers to the entrepreneurial myth. I also looked at simplicity, the idea of simplicity and the KISS principle by Edward de Bono and other great thinkers like Albert Einstein and Leonardo da Vinci had similar ideas. The e-myth talks about that most businesses fail because the founders are technicians. In other words, they know what they're doing. They might be a good baker or a good butcher or a good mechanic or a good plumber or a, good, a really good electrician or in my case, a good dance teacher. And so they were inspired to start a business, but they did not know how successful businesses run. So they're missing some key information about actually running a business. Simplicity and KISS. You may have heard of this acronym. It stands for Keep It Simple. And some people say stupid, keep it simple stupid, but I think that's a bit rude. So I tend to say keep it short and simple. Edward de Bono had some words to say about this idea, simplicity. He said, designing for simplicity is not as difficult as trying to simplify something which is already in progress. And this is a similar idea to do the job properly first time so you won't have to do it again, which is one lesson my father taught me. Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And what he's talking about here is it, it's really important when you have a complex idea that you are able to communicate that idea um, to other people. And so your language needs to be made simple. I like this idea because it's very similar to what I do as, a dan as, a, as an English language teacher. However, there's a warning. Don't make it so simple that it's actually wrong. And I see a lot of examples of that in English language teaching. Leonardo da Vinci, he was an artist and also a scientist. He said that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So it's something to aspire to, something really worthwhile, not just a scientific concept, but something with um, innate quality. So I read books and I read stuff on the internet and I also sought advice from people, people who knew what they were talking about. I visited my old uh, teachers and mentors in Canberra where I received my dance um, uh, training, dance teacher training. I also talked to business coaches, accountants and lawyers and other business people as well. 